Hello, I am Bristol Biggs. This is AM 1220 KHDS, your hometown station on the new radio show, Our Way on the Highway. Uh, today, I am with Nathan. Hi. Our, our co-host, Alex Urbina. Our co-co-host. And our interviewee, or interviewer, I'm not sure how that suffix works, um, the founder of iLead, the lovely Amber Raskin. Uh, Amber, how about you start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, first, thank you for having me today, and congrats on your new radio show. That's very exciting. Yes, we I think are you're also gonna... excited. Yeah, great. I think you're going to be on once a month to start with, correct? Yeah, every uh, at the end of every month, I believe. And what's your involvement in it? Are you... Yeah, I, I know you're here hosting now. What's what 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 happened before this? Uh, most of us just kind of uh, were busy with other stuff and couldn't be here today. They yeah. had like uh, other uh, personal. Well, stuff. I'm talking about what what planning went into making today happen. Oh, we have spent quite a while practicing, talking in front of the class, getting used to working together. Mm -hmm. Everyone really, uh, everyone kind of. I'm guessing kind of like everybody is gonna have a is gonna have a, is gonna be in the show at one point. I mean, until the end of the semester, I'm guessing. I'm so you're sure. the, the two courageous people that stepped up first. to be Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. That's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else just chickened out or had other plans going on at their house. Yeah, most of them had other plans. We'll get them there. We'll get them here in a future show. Oh, yeah, huh? they're going to be in yeah, future yeah. shows. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so thank you for having me as your first guest. No um, I am, uh, as you said, uh, my name's Amber Raskin, um, Amber Golden Raskin in print and legally. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I started about... 10 years ago, I started SCVI, which was Santa Clarita's first um, independent study, I'm sorry, independently run um, site-based charter school and first uh, uh, elementary charter school. And um, so I was really proud to do that way back when that happened, um, which seems so long ago, almost a decade. Um, because at the time, I um, there were no choices. There were very few choices in Santa Clarita. Um, and that really is what prompted me to start the school was I was looking for a, a different kind of school for my daughter who was um, at the time, I started thinking about it in preschool and kindergarten. She went to a traditional uh, district school in uh, first grade and kindergarten and first grade. But then um, when I started to feel like it, she was just an out of the box kind of kid. She was an out of box thinker. And I come from a long, long line of entrepreneurs, both, and my husband does too. So we're very entrepreneurial in our thinking. And we're really, it's very important to us that our kids learn to be inventive and creative and out of the box problem solvers who can adapt. And um, so something about the system and the, the schools here in Santa Clarita, it was, it was kind of a conundrum because the schools here in Santa Clarita are like the best of the best. You know, they're really great schools here in the district schools. And, um, but, and I thought, wow, if that's the best of the best, what am I going to do? <laughs> and um, so I just really thought something different was what I was after. And when I looked at the private schools, they were, they, they were really great also. Um, but still kind of teaching in the same method. So there was something about the the way the the way education was set up to be the system of education that wasn't going to work for me and um and meanwhile remember that homeschooling was starting to become a really big trend too so i started while i was looking homeschooling while i was trying to figure out what to do and then um and i sometimes say a little naively said i'm going to start a charter school we need one of those i didn't understand at the time that most people thought of charter schools as inner city um inner city choices around schools that are failing because the schools in this area n not failing in any way they're amazing school district yeah. schools you know and so um i didn't realize that that would be in it in itself kind of its own controversy because they uh because why do we need a choice right is what everybody's thinking yeah. and and so really what i started looking for was um just a different approach just a fresh different approach to how to teach kids the same kind of content but I in get, a different way yeah yeah like because I, I get that they need to learn certain things although what they need to know i would say is changing it with the changing uh, market and the and our society that is changing so much with so much innovation. Um, but the what I what I started to look for was a different way to learn it in the beginning. And now I'm even would contend that some of the skills that we're teaching need to change too. There's a couple things that you've said that really caught my 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 ear. And you you've used the word different three different times. Mm -hmm. When you say 
I wanted a different or alternative choice. What what does that mean? Because most people don't know what you're what you mean by different. Like like how, how is the school different? What does it offer that most people either can't see or don't understand? From my experience, when you explain what SEVI is, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Yeah. And 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 if you get it, you get it. Mm-hmm. So what, what what does it mean by different? I'm sure through the years you've been fine tuning how to articulate it in a certain way that people. More people are starting to get it. Abso- right? Absolutely, and and there's actually another distinction I want to point out that you're saying, which is some people look at charter schools and think all charter schools are the same. And actually, the fact that all charter schools are different is the the beauty and the uniqueness of charter schools. Right. So charter schools are different from uh, in, from district schools in the way that they're organized, in their governance, and in the way that the funding is. They're public schools. They're free to attend and um, without district boundaries or zip codes. But um, but the way they're overseen is different also. Um, they have their own governing board, or at least most of them have one governing board per school. That's kind of the standard. Not necessarily legally has to be that way, but that is what many do, and that's what we do. And they make decisions for that site as opposed to district schools that have one governing board for many sites and so the that the the district in our case the district schools governing board um, has oversight over us but they don't govern what when we open our doors what curriculum curriculum we use and all that so that's the first distinction about charters um, and and there's other charters that like, like I said or, organized differently in different ways and and um, there's the flexibility there is the intent of the law um, in order to let them innovate and um, then the next distinction would be what does SCVI do and and I lead which is our affiliate schools um, they we're very different even for charter schools like if you were to tour charter schools all, all over the state or the country even I would say most are what we call um, what's called in the charter school movement a no excuses model so that's that's the traditional way that's the traditional way of teaching pretty much the same content pretty much the same way but maybe in a small school environment which is also pretty valuable too um, that's not what we do and we intentionally set out to not do that what because what I said like you pointed out was I wanted something different I wanted something different from memorize and take a test which has served a lot of people really well for a long time but I knew that was not gonna work for my daughter and the way I knew the most was it didn't work for me right. when I you know 30 years ago when I was in school and um, so I wanted something that was hands-on that was relevant that was gonna teach them to do things that were meaningful in the society now not practice something or memorize something that they could then apply once they're adults now can you can you say that it's a different kind of learning yes because for me when I went to school I memorized and I don't think I learned anything I don't think I learned well, what they were teaching me th- but if I experienced something and I had an experience of it it was almost like I learned it and so I think there's a distinction there of what you guys are doing at the school and on campus is you're creating an environment where you're teeing it up for the kids to actually have an experience as they're learning so that they retain it. Well, that is uh, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and in fact, this radio show is a really good example Absolute, of that. Absolute, 100%. Because ha- if you can't fail or make mistakes and perhaps be embarrassed or you know not look good, then it's not doesn't mean it. It's not, there's nothing at stake. So we want it to be high stakes where they're learning as they're actually doing. And um, so this radio show, I, I, everything won't go perfect. And that's the point. That's right. Yeah. It's it's about just getting out there, giving them an opportunity, right, to get out there and say a few things. Even like yeah. now, you get an opportunity to chime in and pitch in and just have your voice be heard is also an opportunity for you guys. Yeah, this is definitely a very, very new experience for me and for us. Yeah, it's quite nerve-wracking <laughs> well it's, congratulations for stepping out yeah, even though you're nervous it's yeah, a beautiful absolutely. thing absolutely you guys sitting in the hallway watching you be nervous this is what life is really about and I think that the school kind of you know they talk about art imitates life life imitates art you're giving them an opportunity to experience what real life looks like like being outside nervous in the hallway waiting for an interview right to be mm-hmm. interviewed for your dream job or whatever it is that's what I saw when I was out there was I was excited for you because you're getting an opportunity to challenge your fears and face your fears and all that kind of stuff one of the things that when you were talking amber and you guys jump in whenever you feel like it this is kind of this is your show yeah so just jump in there if you have a question throw at her but the question i was thinking was and i'm probably outdating myself uh i remember when i was a kid watching a program uh called fame 
and they probably won't know what fame is but it was a, a program where kids were going to this alternative school to learn dance and creative art and it and i remember being a kid going i would love to go to a school like that where is that and i didn't even know if it existed or not and that's kind of how i see scvi it's kind of like their own fame where where the teachers are in there and they're fanning the flame of each kid to ignite some kind of a passion and a purpose and that's what i love most about scvi yeah. is that similar to what well, yeah, it, it is exactly. Um, in fact, my daughter, who is very into the arts, um, she's a performer, and um, she uh, one of the an example of what you're saying that we do do there is there's many students that have started businesses or nonprofits, um, and my daughter is one of the examples. Um, and uh, there's another story I'll, I can talk about in a second about that. But she. Um, she for her economics class she started a, a student run business she started a, a theater company um for economics and the whole point was that she's learning how economics got, runs in the real world and i when i studied economics did not do well i had to take the class twice in college <laughs> and um then i got out of college and went wow this is really interesting stuff but it was not interesting to me in college because i was just memorizing and falling asleep in class so my daughter kn knows more about economics now than i ever did when I started college, and she is still in high school. That's that's what we continue to create create opportunities to do. Yeah, I think it's like when you when somebody's interested in a subject and you give them permission or light a fire f uh, for them, then all of a sudden that fire now leads them to do their own research and dig a little deeper and want to learn a little more about whatever that subject is. Yeah, that's the difference with project-based learning, which is what our focus is. We have a few focuses um, that um, are really important and near and dear to our heart. One is project-based learning is where it started, and then it started encompassing social-emotional learning, and now we call we call it deeper learning, which includes project-based learning, but is other more relevant, meaningful things. But um, we uh, we lost my train of thought no that's all right i was just talking about lighting that fire inside of a kid yeah and then and then that fire kind of may, it forces them to want to go and learn more about that subject oh. rather than us telling you yeah, yeah. you should be trying to learn so, the subject so and that's the idea behind project-based learning which is that you can um is that you the idea is that you look at what you want to do, the project you want to do, and then that motivates you to learn the skills to implement that That's, project. So you give them options that, that they're hungry for, that they right. want. Yeah. yeah, because if you do it in reverse, then it's boring. It's memorizing, taking yeah. a test, trying to figure it out when it's not really meaningful. But I always call starting the school the first real project because it really meant a lot to get that school open. <laughs> and I knew nothing about starting charter schools. Now, I did know business. In my former life, I worked in television as a line producer, which meant I did all the nuts and bolts and the hiring and, and watching the budget and creating systems and that kind of thing. So that part I knew, but I did not know education. I did not know how to keep the school in a special place and make it different. And all that I've learned in the past decade um, in the first real project of getting the school going. That's awesome. And just like this class, you guys signed up because they uh, proposed this kind of a class for you. And what compelled you to say, I want to, I want to test out. I want to try that. Right. And gave yeah. you guys that opportunity for, for me it was kind of uh it was kind of the same reason that i went into this one play that i did it was the first time i ever like went into theater at all i mean there was one time but i left because of some personal reasons but i i went back in or i went into this because it's a completely new thing for me it's a completely new experience and i'm going to learn a lot of a lot of things and it, I thought it'd be, it's going to be really, really fun. That's right. What kind of a question do you have for her? As she's sharing, what kind of a question comes up for you that's interesting and in what she's been sharing that you want to ask her? One thing that I really, that kind of boggled my mind, like, not really boggled, but like, yeah. kind of stuck in my mind while I was researching you, mm -hmm. was what did you do in television? Well, so uh, as I said, I was a line producer, and i in fact, a good story about that is I worked my way up. I through two different internships, I found out what I wanted to do and what I did not want to do. I went to college for interior design, and um, I liked the creativity of it. But through an internship, figured out that those that that group of people was not my tribe. I, I really enjoyed what I did, and and had um, home makeover existed when I was getting out of college, I probably would have done something like that, because. Mm. I, I feel very passionately about your environment can really um, affect you in a positive or negative way. And I, I like good environments that are supportive of who we want to be, right? And that, that nurture and fulfill us. But um, that 
focus on making a difference. I, I wasn't finding the right people. I'm sure they're in interior design, but I, I wasn't finding it. And so then I thought, well, what do I want to do? What I really want to do, what it really, if I search my soul, what matters to me the most is to make a difference. And I don't really care what the vehicle is. I don't care if it's radio or TV or education, which I didn't even know about at the time, but I was still kind of recovering from my education because it wasn't that great in my, you know, I didn't have, have such a great experience. Um, and I, so I thought, I don't know what I want to do. So I thought, and I had already just graduated from college at the time, and I thought kind of randomly, well, I just want to surround myself with people who are my tribe that want to make a difference too. And the person that was motivating me by, the, by far the most is uh, what at the time was Oprah. And so I, my plan was to work with Oprah. And I, uh, so I cold called a bunch of talk, talk shows and I got an internship again on a talk show, the Lisa Gibbons show and, um, was living in Orange County at the time and commuted like two hours there and two hours back and said, uh, when I, I showed up for my internship, they said, you need to be here 10 hours a week. And oh, I wow. said, okay, well, can I come more? Cause 10 hours a week's not that much. You yeah. know? And I said, can I come more? And they said, well, sure, I guess so. <laughs> and so then I just showed up when people who were paid showed up, and I left when people who were paid uh, left, and then you know they'd start turning to me and relying on me. And so it wasn't long before I had a job. I didn't realize what a smart strategy that was right? until I was older. All right, yeah. It was pretty smart, but and I recommend it for a lot of people. But um, it was uh, that was what started me into television, and um, it, because I mostly I was going to work my way towards Oprah, living in Chicago. I figured I'd be a set designer for her <laughs> was my plan at the time. And life, as it does, takes many took many turns. And mostly, I met my husband, who also works in television, still does. And um, then we, uh, and then I decided I didn't want to move to Chicago. It was a little too cold, and he wasn't interested in moving there. And yeah. and um, so followed a different path and um, moved out to the suburbs here in. Santa Clarita actually um, and when I was pregnant with my daughter and um, we thought well well I, I, we weren't sure if I was gonna work or not and then when I had her I said oh no I got to stay home with her and so I stayed home for about eight years taking care of her mostly because I didn't feel like it was fair to have two parents in the television industry because it's a lot of hours and I wanted them to have someone at home sometimes and so I was kind of a super volunteer for a, almost a decade then during that phase of my life and then when dis when I decided to open the school um, I resigned all my volunteer opportunities and made the school my main focus as a volunteer and then when I kept showing up every day for years finally I just went on salary what I love most about that story is because you started off you know wanting to make a difference for your kids and so you created the school and now you're making a difference with hundreds if not thousands of kids it reminds me of you know that father that you know wants his kid to play sports and nobody, none of the parents want to step up and be the coach, and so he does, yeah. so that his kid has a team to play with, and then it ends up where he's now coaching and mentoring all the kids on the team, and, and how rewarding is that, right? Yeah, that's really been the honor of my life, Yeah, is that I... I did. I, I could have. I could have, and still could afford private school, but I wanted to put that money, and I do donate a lot to the school and work hard because it's a passion to do this for other kids. Because I thought, I just, why not? Right? I'm going to have a project or volunteer or do something anyways. May as well put it towards this, and may as well put that money towards this. And it's been such a beautiful journey to see so many kids, that so many more people than I expected. It, it thrive in it. I don't know if you realize this, and we're going to go on a break in a few seconds, so you're going to get ready to take us out, right? All right. But yeah. when we get there, I don't know if you realize this yet, and some people have to get there in their own spiritual journey, but all of these kids in our community are our kids. Yes. And when you get that, when I, you get I'm you, you're me, and we're one, then then that village becomes, it's a school for my kids, it's a school for our kids. And I know that you get that, and I mm -hmm. appreciate you for that, and I appreciate you for taking the time to come out. Yeah. Take us out, buddy. All right, uh, we're going to be right back. Uh, AM 1220 KHGS, your hometown station, our way on the highway.